Welcome back, boys and girls. This is kindergarten week seven of the spring session. Our first activity for today is called Place Value Fun, and this is a quick, fun little activity to review place value. Okay, boys and girls, now we're gonna do an activity called Place Value Fun. And for this activity, you're gonna use this little worksheet right here that's attached to your homework packet. And we're also gonna need a deck of cards and you wanna take out the kings, queens, and jacks, okay? And for this activity, basically I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn over, you can turn over three or four cards depending on your child's ability level. Are they um, capable of doing place value to the, in, to the hundreds or the thousands place? Basically is the question between that. Because here we have a ones place, one card would be ones place, two cards would be tens place, and three cards would be hundreds place. The fourth card would be um, going to the thousands. All right, I'm not gonna do thousands today, we're just gonna do um, to the hundreds. And what you're going to do is you're going to take, I got a five, a three, and a two. So I'm going to take those numbers. You're going to want to use a pencil in case you make mistakes, but mine is easier to see if I use a marker. So I have a five, a three, and a two. Those are the numbers that I'm working with. Um, my first question is, what is the largest number possible? Now, how are you going to make the largest number possible? Right now, we have the number 532. What is the largest number possible? Well, since we have a five in our hundreds place, that's gonna be the biggest number um, that we can make because we have, we have 500. And then 30 is gonna be a great number for our tens place, and then two is in our ones place. So that is actually the highest number possible that we can make, 532, 532. Now, what is the smallest number possible, which is the next question. How would you rearrange these cards to make the smallest number possible? Well, I'd wanna put my two in my hundreds place for sure. And then I think I would put my three in my tens place and my five in my ones place because I'm gonna want my biggest number in my ones place. 235, that is our smallest number possible. 235. And then what is 100 less than this number? What is 100 less than 235? I'd have to change that two to a 100. So instead of 200, I'm going to have 135. 135. And then the next question is, what is 10 more than this number? So in order to find 10 more, I have to find my tens place. So this is my hundreds place, this is my tens place, and this is my ones place. So if I'm gonna find 10 more than what is in my tens place, I'm gonna have to do 10 more than 30. What is 10 more than 30? You take that up to a 40. So it would be 245. 245. Now, is 245 odd or even? Do you remember how to tell what your numbers are odd or even? A little review is these numbers here don't matter. The only number that matters when you're talking about odd and, odd and even is whatever is in your ones place. If the number in your ones place is odd, then the whole number is odd. If that number is even, then the whole number is even. So in this case, 235, is five even or odd? It's odd. Why is it odd? Because if you have five people going on a field trip, one, two, three, four, five, these guys can be partners and these guys can be partners, but you have one left out without a partner. So in, in, if, if, if there's one left out without a partner, if everybody doesn't have a partner, then the number is odd. So this number is odd. And then you would just put, you'd write odd here, and then you would play again. And you can even make copies of this and play multiple times, depending on what kind of um, practice your child needs with this type of, um, of place value activity. Okay, have some fun, challenge yourself. 
Okay, boys and girls, the next activity is called perfect purchases. And parents, it's kind of up to you for this activity how far you want to take it. Um, basically, you're going to be putting price tags on items around your house, or you can use the picture cards that I've included in here. And, um, and you're going to put different values on items that your kids can then go shopping for. So you're kind of creating a store around your house. And, um, and this is a great activity for kids to uh, add together coins and learn coin, learn coin identification and value and add coins together. Okay, boys and girls, now we're going to play a game called Perfect Purchase. And for this, you're going to need your shopping list right here because we're going to go shopping. We all love to go shopping. And you're going to need these picture cards to cut out these picture cards here. Or you can find items around your house and give them certain um, price values, okay? So for instance, I've already cut those picture cards out like this. I have, I have colored ones. And um, you can use, you can cut them out and then you can put different prices on them to see how much they're gonna cost you. Um, the crust cost four cents. And, or you can get items around your house and stick prices on them and do it that way as well, okay? So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna tell me what I bought, okay? And, um, and let's say you're gonna purchase pizza, for example, okay? Pizza is six cents. This little backwards C with a line through it, that's how you make the cents sign. So pizza is gonna be six cents. Now I want you to use brave spelling when you're, when you're gonna write the word pizza, because it's asking right here what I bought. And you're gonna use brave spelling. So I'm gonna sound out pizza. P, E, Z, A. Uh. I might spell pizza like that, pizza, pizza. Um, okay, and then that's brave selling. So it sounds out phonetically. All right, and then the price is six cents. So I'm gonna put here six cents, okay? And then for the coins over here, I'm gonna see which coins am I gonna use. Um, and you're gonna, you can pull out the coins that are in your, in your um, bin and look at those a little bit, and you can say, okay, so six cents. And I'm gonna say a penny is worth one, the nickel is worth five, the dime is worth 10, and the quarter is worth 25. So how do I figure out which of these coins I'm gonna use to make six cents? Well, first I'm gonna use a nickel, which is worth five. So here's my nickel right here. So I'm gonna want a nickel, which is worth five, and then a penny, which is worth one, because five plus one equals six. So that's six cents, five, six. And to represent those coins in this place right here, I'm gonna put a nickel and a penny, six cents. Okay, um, so that's how you play. And then you just move on to the next picture card and, and value. If you are doing really well with coins, um, mom and dad, you can put a higher value on them, like this is 23 cents. And if you're still kind of just at the beginning of counting out coins, you might wanna do something like a five cent or a 10 cent or something where you can just add a couple pennies to that. So maybe something like 12 cents where you'd say 10 plus two more, um, is 12, but if you get really good, you can even you can even put prices on things that are a dollar or more. So um, that's it, get creative and um, work to your child's highest ability level, okay? Have fun. Our next activity for today is called Diffy Dozen. And this is a great activity for counting up and counting back and using your addition and subtraction facts. Okay, boys and girls, we're now gonna play a game called Diffie Dozen. And for this game, you're gonna need your chips. I need each player, I'm gonna play with two players. Each player is gonna get 10 chips and you need your two dice, okay? I'm gonna go first and I'm gonna roll my dice. I'm gonna find the difference between my two numbers here. So what is the difference between six and one? Basically, I have to take my six and subtract one from it. Six minus the one is gonna leave me with five, okay? And then my partner is gonna roll. So my number is five. My partner is gonna roll and they have a three and a two, and the difference between three or two, I basically have to take my three, subtract or take away two from the three, and that player has one. So then the player that has the greatest number gets to take that many chips from the other player. My number was five, and this player's number was one. So 
I win that round and I get to take five chips from this player. One, two, three, four, five. All right, and then we're gonna play again and the player with all the chips at the end is gonna win. Okay, we're gonna roll our dice again. I have a five and a three. So the difference between those two numbers is two. And then the opponent rolls and he has a five and a two. And the difference between those two numbers, can you figure it out, is three, okay? So I got a two and he has a three. So this time my opponent wins the round and he gets to take three chips from me. And you keep going back and forth like that. The person out of chips first um, does, loses the game and the person who gets all the chip wins the game. All right, have some fun. Our next activity is called Number Bond, and Number Bonds are a great tool that we all need to know. And in this activity, we're gonna be practicing our fact families using our Number Bonds. Okay, boys and girls, now we're gonna do a Number Bond activity. And for this activity, you're gonna need this Number Bond worksheet from your homework packet, and we're gonna slide it into our dry erase um, board here. Let's slide it in there. Okay, there we go. And you're gonna need your dry erase marker. And basically, I'm gonna figure out like whatever level your child is at. If um, I'm, I'm just gonna pick a number that's in the teen numbers because a lot of us are working at that level. So I'm gonna say number 13. And I'm gonna write 13 in this. Um, this is the total of my number bond. And then we're gonna split the number bond up. And I'm gonna split it up between my tens over here and my ones down here. Now I have one group of 10 in this number. So I'm gonna put 10 up here. And then I have three in my ones place. So I'm gonna put three down here. Now, um, I'm, you're gonna come up with the two addition problems and the two subtraction problems that go along with that number bond. And, um, and this is called your fact family, okay? So we're gonna say 10 plus three, 10 plus three equals 13. Then I can flip that around. If 10 plus three equals 13, then I can say three plus 10 equals 13. Now to come up with my subtraction problems that are part of this fact family, I have to start with my 13, which is my largest number. 13 minus, you can pick either one of these, 13 minus three equals 10. And then the other problem would be 13 minus 10 equals three. Okay, so that's how you fill in your number bond and create a fact family. And then you can do it again several different times. Okay, boys and girls, our next activity is the vowel diagraph board game. And in this game, um, it's a fun game, and but it's, it's also really gonna help you learn more of those tricky vowel combinations like O-A, A-I, E-E, and E-A. And you're gonna get a chance to read words with that and to, and to use those vowel combinations to write words. Okay, boys and girls, now we're gonna play the Vowels Diagraph board game. And for this game, you're gonna need um, at least two players. And so you need a marker for each player, a dice. And then these are the, the rhyme cards that are attached to your homework packet. And if you land on it, they're kind of large. I did a small game board, so you would normally put them right here on the game board. And then this is the words that contain, and they would normally go right there on the game board. So you, when you land on one of those spots, you're going to select one of those cards and then do whatever it says. Um, okay, but I wanted to go over the sounds here for you because each word that you land on for this game um, is going to contain one of these sounds. Um, so here we have E, the EE -E and the EA also says E. So you really don't know, there's no real way of knowing which one to use. You just have to get familiar enough with the words to know which one you're gonna use there. Um, okay, and then we have the one that says O, this says A, and this is the double O that says O or A. Uh. Okay, um, so basically what you do is you're gonna go ahead and roll the dice. I got one, I'll be purple. I'm gonna move right to the B, and then I have to say, it says B, E, so I have to choose which E I'm gonna use. And then if you want, you can go ahead and even write it down on a piece of a separate piece of paper. So it starts with a B, and then I'm gonna use the E, E for B. And now it's gonna be my, my opponent's turn. 
opponent got five, one, two, three, four, five, and this is rain. So now I'm gonna use R A. Which, which sound here, which two letters are gonna make the A sound? A I. So I have R A and I hear a N at the end and there's my A in the middle. Okay, so that's how you play all the way around the board until you get to the finish line. And um, if you land here, that's the shortcut. So you get to take us, you get to go straight up to the teacup there. Um, that's it. Uh, should be pretty simple. And it's a great way to practice some of these really tricky um, sounds. Have fun. Okay, boys and girls, our book for today is called Leonardo the Terrible Monster. And Leonardo tries very hard to be a scary monster. And as hard as he tries, he just isn't able to scare anyone. But he soon realizes that although he's a terrible monster, he kind of learned how to be a really good friend. And um, that's what this story is about. After you read the story, I want you to find this packet of um, materials attached to your homework packet, and you are going to use it to create your own monster. And then you're going to use this monster to write a paper about him using all kinds of adjectives. Okay, boys and girls, hopefully you had a chance to read Leonardo the Terrible Monster, and that is the cutest darn monster I have ever seen, um, until we can make our own monster here. So we are going to use these materials that I attached to your folder, and you're gonna use them to make a monster. Now, I have given you some stuff to start with, um, but you can also add stuff from home. Like I've added some pipe cleaner stuff here, some little white pieces of paper, and I even cut out an extra circle out of construction paper. I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that, okay? So we are going to go ahead and make a monster, and then I'm gonna to talk to you about what your activity is going to be. All right, so first I'm gonna start, I'm gonna put this right down here. You can make your monster any way you want, but I do hope that you use lots of stuff on your monster because we are going to write a paper, or at least we're gonna write about our monster, and um, I'm gonna put three googly eyes here. And you want to have lots of detail on them so you can write um, write some in an interesting paper. Okay, so, oops, well, I lost that one, so I'm going to do a star eye in the middle. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay, so, and then I'm going to put some, I'm going to put a couple of teeth on my monster down here. This is, I use this green thing to make a mouth for them. So, little teeth coming out down here. Boom, boom, boom. Getting creative. Use anything you want. Oh, I like them to have a little bit of hair. Get, him, get some hair up here and get some glue out there. Okay, now I'm gonna stick these pieces up like this. Make them look kind of crazy. There we go. If you're gonna use the glue gun, make sure mom and dad are around or something because you don't wanna burn yourself. There, and now I'm gonna put a little nose on them. I think I'll put a little flower nose. There we go, a little flower nose in the middle. Um, and I don't know, I think it could be done. Okay, so there's my monster. Wah, wah, wah. I've got some teeth hanging out here. Um, okay, so now I want to talk to you for a second about nouns. A noun is a person, place, or thing. Okay, so your house is a noun. Uh, this monster, he's a noun. Um, uh, and what else is a noun? Things, your toys are nouns, chair, table, anything, anything is a noun, any place, the grocery store, the movie theater, Starbucks, they're all nouns, okay? So now an adjective is something that describes a noun. So um, uh, your shirt, for example, that you're wearing right now is a noun. What color is your shirt? The color of your shirt is an adjective because it describes your noun. Maybe it's a pink shirt or a blue shirt or a green shirt. The colors are adjectives that describe the noun. Okay, so we are going to do a little bit of a writing assignment. And you have this paper in your attached to your homework homework packet. And we're going to do a writing assignment where we're going to we're going to write about our monster and we're going to use as many adjectives adjectives as we can to describe our monster. So I want your sentence to start out by saying, my monster's name is, and then just pick a name. 
My monster's name is Max, okay? And then you can say Max has, um, pink, has pink and gold hair, okay? So I didn't just say he had hair. I explained that he has pink and gold hair, okay? Max has, you could say teeth, but you could give me more, more um, detail than that. You could say Max has four, one, two, three, four, four white teeth and a blue flower, sparkly flower nose. So as many adjectives as you can get in. So now I didn't only say a nose, I said a sparkly blue nose, okay? So here you could say he has eyes or he has two googly eyes and one sparkly star eye. Okay, so as many adjectives as you can to describe it, and you're gonna write those right there on this piece of paper. Um, and that's the assignment, and I just hope that you guys have some fun with it, and if you feel really good about it, I'd love to hear about these during your teacher talk time. Uh, okay, have some fun.